Isang mabiyayang uh, uh, araw ng Panginoon po sa bawat isa. Muli po tayong lumapit sa ating uh, Panginoon Diyos upang uh, hingin po ang kanyang tulong at ang kanyang pagpapala as we study His Word together this morning. Tayo po yung manalangin. Ang manaming Diyos, kami po ay dumudulog sa trono ninyong biyaya at ngayon po ay nais po namin saliksikin ang iyong salita para sa aming mga puso sapagkat alam namin Panginoon na mahina ang aming pananampalataya at kailangan po namin na ito'y inyong palakasin. And Father, as we look to your word, tulungan niyo po kami na makita ang iyong nais sabihin sa amin, maunawaan po namin inyong salita. Help us, Father, na amin pong mag ang lalim ng inyong pag-ibig sa amin and cause us not to despise your discipline or be wary of your reproof. May we humble ourselves under your mighty and yet tender saving hands while rejoicing in our Savior and being confident in hope. Oh Lord, we pray that you would speak to our own hearts in our own situation. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Noong pong 1924, dalawa pong magkapatid ang nagpa siya pong uh, magbukas ng uh, isa pong sporting goods company. At ito po ay kanilang itinayo sa sarili po ng bansa sa Germany at ito po ang Adidas o Adidas para sa kanda. Noong pong 1948 ay nagkaroon po ng hidwaan ang magkapatid na si Adolf or Adi Dassler at si Rudolf Dassler na nagtatag ng kumpanyang Adidas o Adidas. So sila po ay uh, nagkaroon ng hidwaan after a bitter legal battle. Hindi po sila nagkasundo, nagkagalit po sila. At dahil po doon, naghiwalay sila at si Rudolf Dassler po ay nagpas siya magtayo ng kanilang sariling kumpanya at ito po ang Puma or Puma. At simula po noon ay hindi na ho nagkausap o hindi na nag-uusap ang dalawang magkapatid po na ito. Ngayon, ang Adidas ay masasabi ho natin isa sa pinakamalaking uh, sporting goods company sa buong mundo at ang Puma ay is doing quite well din naman. Pero ho, ang hidwaan, ang di pagkakasundo ay nagpatuloy at nagpapatuloy. Ang dalawang magkapatid na ito, si Adi at Ru- Rudolf Dustler ay iniiwasan nila ang isa't isa sa kanila na hindi sila magkita at hindi mag-usap. And the conflict even extends to the workplace. Kaya ho yung mga empleyado ng uh, Adidas ay uh, hindi nakikihalubilo sa mga empleyado ng Puma o ng Puma. Relationships are messy and complicated. Nang maging sa ilalim po ng magandang sitwasyon o circumstances at tangkain natin na inavigate ang ating pong mga hangarin and distrust of other people can be one of the most difficult thing to do. Napakahirap. Especially kung tayo po ay nakasakit ng ating kapwa o ng ibang tao. And sa lahat po ng mga challenges na ito, ang tanong po marahil ay, our relationship, our relationship really worth it? Mahalaga ba talaga? How hard should we work to restore broken relationships? At gaano kahalaga ang relational reconciliation o ang pagkakasundo sa ugnayan? Sinasabi po na relation, re- reconciliation is an 
awfully difficult path for many of us to choose and to take. Na ito ay piliin at ito po ay tahakin. It is di difficult because it is costly. And it is costly to both sa nakasakit at doon sa nasaktan. It is costly to the one who has harmed others because kailangan po nilang aminin, kailangan po nilang kilalanin na totoo na sila ay nakasakit, na sila po ay nagkamali, na sila po ay nagkasala. That they were inappropriate. And by so doing, they have to be open to both asking for forgiveness. Whether or not na dumating ang, at ibigay ang pagpapatawad sa kanila. It is costly to the one who has harmed because kailang maging willing sila na tanggapin yung pag-amin ng pag kakamali na nagkasala o nakasakit sa kanila. To set aside their anger and their desire for revenge. At lalong higit ang magpatawad. It is costly because reconciliation is more than simply dismissing what has happened. Hindi mo siya isa sa walang bahala lamang ang mga nangyari. At magpipretend ka na parang hindi ka nasaktan o walang nangyaring pananakit ng kalooban sa'yo. It means acknowledging the depth of the pain and out of that pain, being open to the approach of other. Reconciliation is really a big word. And one of the reasons that Christ came and died for our sins was not only to reconcile our relationship with God, but also to re reconcile us with others. God is in the business of reconciling broken relationship. How should we pursue reconciliation with others? Paano natin itataguyod? ang pagkakasundo. The renewing of relationships with, with one another. Sa pag-aaral po natin ngayon, patungkol po sa narrative na ito about a reunion, a meeting, pagtatangpo, we can learn principles about renewing our broken relationships as well yung ating pong relasyon sa ating pamilya, among family members, sa ating pong mga kaibigan, sa ating co-workers, at maging sa ating mga ka-church members, sa ating ka-church mates. At upang bigyan po tayo ng background, kasi kailangan po natin makita yung background nito pong chapter 33. Kung matatandaan po ninyo, 20 years earlier, si Jake, nilisan po ni Jacob ang kanila pong sambahayan, ang kanya pong tahanan, dahil ho nangako ang kanyang kapatid na siya po ay papatayin. Dahil ho sa pagnanakaw niya ng birthright ni Iso na kanyang kapatid doon po sa Genesis chapter 25 at yung blessing ng kanyang ama na si Isaac doon po sa Genesis chapter 27. At sa mga talata pong ito, particularly in Genesis chapter 25, allow me to read this to you. And Iso said to Jacob, let me eat some of that red stew for I am exhausted. Therefore, his name was, was called Edom. Jacob said, sell me, sell me your birth right now. Esau said, I am about to die of what use is a birthright to me. Jacob said, swear to me now. So he swore to him and sold his birthright to Jacob. Then Jacob gave Esau bread and lentil stew, and he ate and drank and rose and went his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright. Genesis 27 says, Now Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing with which his father has blessed him. 
And Esau said to himself, The days of mourning for my father are approaching. Then I will kill my brother Jacob. Twenty years before, he defrauded his brother. Dinaya niya ho, nilinglang niya ang kanyang kapatid and was forced to run for his life to escape his wrath. Takasan niya ho yung galit ng kanyang kapatid na si Iso and that severed their relationship. Nasira. Iso was so angry with Jacob that he set out to kill him, his own brother. At kung titignan na natin yung, sit- yung sitwasyon, parang irreparable ang lahat. It's beyond repair. At dahil ho doon, narinig ng ina, eh, pabor lang naman natin na si Rebecca, ang paborito niya, si Jacob. Rebecca ha- had told Jacob in Genesis 27, when your brother is no, leng- no longer angry with you and forgets you- what you did to him, I'll send word for you to come back from here. Palipasin mo muna yung galit ng kapatid mo. At pagka nawala-wala na yung galit na humupa na, bibigyan kita ng signal. Makakabalik ka na rito. So, but alam po natin ang nangyari. Since she never sent for him, walang natanggap. Sa loob ng dalawang taon, walang natanggap na ganung mensahe. Si Jacob, mula sa kanyang ina, na, na si Rebecca, na makakabalik ka na. And so, Jacob had every reason to believe that 20 years had not diminished Esau's anger. Hindi nabawasan ang galit. And so, Jacob has every reason to believe the acid of resentment and bitterness has been eating away at his brother's heart and soul. For all that time. And so Esau had, has had 20 years to, to let bitterness, yung kapaitan na yun, ay tumindi ng tumindi to fester and hatred grow in his heart. And Jacob know this. But now, sa sitwasyon na ito, pagdating sa chapter 33, because we're talking about chapter 32, no? Babalikan po natin. Now, God had asked Jacob to return to the land of his fathers. And on his way home, returning to Canaan to obey God's command in obedience to God, ang ibig sabihin ho nun, he would have to face his brother Esau, whom he had cheated 20 years before. And the two brothers are about to meet for the first time in two decades, which meant at least sa kaisipan po ni Jacob, kailangan niya pong ihanda ang kanyang sarili upang harapin ang struggle ng kanyang buhay. Harapin ang puot at sukdulang galit ng kanyang kapatid. It had been 20 years since Jacob fled for his life from a furious brother intent on killing him. And so in Genesis chapter 32, Jacob faced that kind of crisis. And Jacob didn't know how Esau would receive him. Hindi niya alam, wala siyang idea kung paano siya tatanggapin ng kanyang kapatid pagka nagkita sila. And so, on his journey toward reconciliation, he sends messengers ahead to gain information about Iso. Pakiramdaman nga natin si Iso. And when the messengers return, pagbalik, ito ang balita kay Jacob. Jacob, yung kapatid mo, may resback na 400 na army. And Jacob is terrified. Nangatang sa takot si Jacob. Wondering what his brother will do to him. 
And Esau could easily wipe out everything that was of value of Jacob, including yung buhay niya. And so, he prayed, Oh God, please deliver me from the, from the hand of my brother, from the hand of Esau, for I fear him that he may come and attack me. In Genesis chapter 32. But what happens next to both Jacob's and ours? Maaring magulat tayo, masurpresa ho tayo. Because it is one of the most touching and instructive scenes in scripture. Isa pong napaka uh, poignant na, na, na tagpo sa Biblia. Very touching. Isang ahong Genesis commentator, si Derek Kidner, ay uh, nagsabing, in, in, in Genesis 33, this is a classic of reconciliation. Ganyan niya ho describe ang Genesis chapter 33. And on its face, this story has every bit of a hallmark reconciliation drama. Tinalo pa ho nito ang Korean drama. One of the most beautiful scenes in Scripture. Isa sa na pinakamagandang tagpo sa Biblia. And there is perhaps nothing so moving as witnessing a fractured family, brothers to brothers, sisters to sisters, being reconciled and reunited. And that's why Genesis chapter 33 is such a moving chapter. And we see this affectionate, emotional encounter between the formerly strange brothers. Sa dalawang nagkahiwalay at nagkagalit. And we are allowed to look in on the reconciliation between Jacob and Esau, his brother, after 20 years of separation and estrangement. And so in this meeting, in this encounter, ano pong mga principles ang maari po nating maitaguyod that we can discern from Jacob's reconciliation with his brother Esau. One principle is that to, to work toward reconciliation, we must pursue change in ourselves and others. At guyod ho natin, pag sumikapan ho natin, pagbabago. Karoon ang pagbabago sa atin at sa iba. At tatandaan po natin, the last time Jacob and Esau were together, Jacob was so determined to get blessing from his father, Isaac, that he went to extraordinary lengths to deceive Isaac, his own father, and defraud Esau out of his birthright. At bilang resulta, galit na galit si Esau sa kanyang kapatid so much that he threatened to kill him. And now, magkikita sila for the first time after this episode. And, and Jacob, the offender, is about to meet Esau, the offended. And what we see here in this passage, this process of reconciliation, is that reconciliation is initiated by a renewed attitude. Because up to now, Jacob hadn't worried about meeting Esau again. He would, sabi niya, pwede naman ako mag-catch up, mag, at mag, 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 siguro pwede ko naman tagpian kung ano man yung mga di namin pagkakaintindihan na may magkapatid. He, he could buy him off with presents. After all, mayaman na si Jacob that time. Kung babalikan ho natin ang chapter 32, Ang dami na hong ari-arian, pagmamayari ni, 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 ni Jacob. But when he sees Esau approaching with a 400 army, Jacob is clearly suspicious about what to expect. And so, not knowing how this will turn out, in addition to the earlier division of his entire company in chapter 32, he is now also divides up his family into four. Sigurista rin si Jacob eh. So, sino ang inuna niya? Yung dalawang servants niya. Kasama yung kanilang mga anak. Pangalawa, 
si Leia at yung kanyang mga anak. Pangatlo, si Rachel na kanyang favorite at si Joseph. Medyo sa likuran na to place of greatest, greatest safety. E siyempre, si safety niya yung mahal niya. At panghuli siya mismo. Ang sabi nga sa verse 33a, Jacob himself went on before them. Ito na ngayon. Notice that previously, sa chapter 32 po, Jacob had stayed behind. Nasa dulo siya. Maniniguarado siya eh. But now, he takes the lead in chapter 33. He is living up to his new name, Israel, dahil merong siyang encounter doon sa chapter 30, 32 with God himself, wrestling with God. And he is a leader now, leading the way and protecting his family. And I want you to see this change in Jacob. May pagbabago nangyari kay Jacob dito. You see a... Uh, in a change in Jacob's courage. Dahil dito sa verse 3, we see he himself went on before them. Nandudun na siya sa harapan. Siya na. Hindi ka gaya sa, verse 30, uh, sa chapter 32, ang plano niya, siya, siya, nasa likuran siya. Kung magka alanganin man ng sitwasyon, at least nasa likod siya, uli siyang mamamatay. <laughs> so, you see, this new Jacob has a courage. He is beginning to take responsibility for the consequences of his own sinful past. He's willing to be held accountable. He, he is willing to stand between potential dangers and with his family. And yes, he's willing to look Iso in the eye and say, I'm willing to be held accountable by you. Handa na akong managot. Gusto ko po makita natin dito yung kagandahan ng pagbabago ni, ni Jacob. He, he really is a changed man. Alam po niyo yung ginamit dito na laging sinasambit. Ayaw pong salitang grace or favor. And it is the same word. At makikita natin to sa verse 5, verse 8, verse 10, and 11. Jacob has been transformed by grace. Hindi alam ni Jacob what was in Esau's heart. And, and, and Esau didn't know what to expect even from, from Jacob. But quickly it became apparent that both brothers longed for reconciliation. Na sila po yung both the offender and the offended. Reconciliation must be intentional. They require purposeful and intentional action. Alam ni Jacob that he had done wrong. And now he knew he had to make it right. He had to take the first step. And here's the principle. Taking the initiative is imperative in reconciliation. We need to Appreciate the enormity of this moment. Narito po ang dalawang magkapatid meeting for the first time after 20 years of estrangement. And this is a climactic moment. While no words are exchanged as this moment, the brother's actions speak louder than words. Because on that morning after all these years, Esau and Jacob met. And Jacob, in verse 3, says, Bowed to the ground seven times until he approached his brother. And this is, the, the act is a posture of humility. Nang pagpapakumbaba, pagkakababa, pagpapakababa. Jacob humbled himself before his brother. He came with the right spirit and with the right attitude. He acknowledged that he had done the wrong. And notice also that Jacob refers to, Esau refers to Jacob in verse 9 as my brother. But Jacob calls Esau in verse 8, 13, 14, and 15 
my Lord. And, and, and the way in which he refers to himself, and listen to this, at the end of verse 5, he is his brother's servant. And so makikita na natin, this is a sign of his limp. He is humbled. He is beautifully changed. He is bowing himself before his brothers and he is humbled. And you see a change in Jacob's humility. At ito po ang isa pang prinsipyo. Humility puts us in a position to reconciliation to occur. Reconciliation demands humility. A price has to be paid for reconciliation and that price is commonly called swallowing your pride. Nung nasa Dubai po ako, madalas po ang batiin, sabi nila sa akin, Pastor, tumataba ka na. Ay, oo oh, nga po, kasi ho, kakakain ho yan ng pride. Or, burying the hache. Or, to agree na tapusin na natin ang tampuhan na ito. Admitting you are wrong. Taking the low place is the best attitude you can take in the process of reconciliation. Yung ginamit pong salita po rito bowing at sa talata hong anim at pito is an act of contrition and repentance. And I want you to see here that Jacob is living a new life that marked his repentance is marked by repairing. Pagre repair. You, you, you change, you, you see a change in Jacob's repentance. He's repairing any damage that he can do, any damage that he has done from the past. And real repentance involves also outward restitution. Nice po ni Jacob to make things right. He, he, he had harm and wrong yung kanya, pong kap, yung kanya pong kapatid. He had stolen his birthright and the inheritance that goes with it. And so, Jacob demonstrated his repentance through the lavish gifts he gave to, 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 to Esau. At makikita ho natin yan sa chapter 32 in the previous chapter. Look at verse 13 and 15 of chapter 32. And sabi dyan, so he stayed there that night and from what he had with him, he took a present for his brother Esau. 200 female goats and 20 male goats, 200 ewes and 20 rams. 30 milking camels and their calves, 40 cows and 10 bulls, 20 female donkeys and 10 male donkeys. So makikita natin dito how Jacob sends all of these presents, gifts, the flocks, goats, cows, herds, and that's about 580 animals. That's like a whole zoo. And this is a very Generous gift. At wala ho siyang wini-withhold dito sa anyang effort to be reconciled with his brother Esau. He truly wanted to make things right with his dear brother. And notice what he says in verse 11. Jacob deliber deliberately uses a very specific, specific word. He says, Esau, please accept. Kapatid, tanggapin mo na. And, and what's the word? He says, accept my blessing. He says, saying, he is saying to, to Esau. Parang sinasabi niya, I, I took what did not belong to me. May kinuha ako na, na hindi talaga para sa akin eh. At gusto kong ibalik sa'yo. I'm giving it back through this presence. I'm giving it back through bowing before you. I'm, I'm giving that which belong to you. Dapat talaga ito sa'yo. Please accept this blessing, kapatid. And so notice that Jacob doesn't simply say, sorry na. At ganun-ganun na lang. 
but he's desperately doing what he can to make things right. He's seeking to reverse the blessing. And so you see this change in Jacob. And re reconciliation is finished in restitution. Restitution is critical for reconciliation. It is the surest evidence of a truly changed heart. Restu restitution shows that we are serious about our apology. It, it shows that we recognize the, the wrong done to another. Restitution is often the foundation on which the bridge of reconciliation is built. And kapatid, do you need to make some kind of restitution? Apologize to a former colleague. Pray for or return something that was stolen. Correct slanderous statements you made. Admit a wrong you committed. Ask forgiveness from people that you treated poorly. Beloved, the absence of reconciliation robs the church of the power of unity. And so the key to reconciliation is your attitude. Mahirap mang lunukin ang tabletang ito para sa atin. So, balit ang susi to being reconciled to a family member, to a churchmate or friend from whom you are strange lies in your and my attitude. Alam ko po ang iniisip po natin. Maraming tanong natin, eh, paano naman yung attitude niya? What about his or her attitude? Pag-usapan din natin yan, mamaya-maya ng konti. O bukas na kaya? Obviously, at some point, their attitude also has to change for reconciliation to be complete. So, balit kadalasan, the key to bringing them to change is when they see how you have responded to the wrong things they have done to you. Di ba? Kung ano yung gagawin natin at ipapakita po sa kanila. Now, the question is, is this. Sa, sa, sa mind ni Jacob Marahil, how will Esau react? Paano magre-react kaya dito si Esau? Will he now carry out his threat to kill me? Gagawin niya na kaya? And, and Jacob has no idea how Esau will react. And indeed, he has every reason to think that this meeting is not going to go well. And perhaps, Esau would try to exact revenge by harming Jacob's family or perhaps Esau's still wants to prove yung kanyang entitlement that yung binigay sa kanyang blessing ay eh, dapat talaga sa kanya. Perhaps 20 years had reinforced and aggravated Esau's hatred, exacerbated yung kanyang galit, yung desire for revenge. But by the grace of God, by God's grace, hindi ho yun ang naging case. Hindi po yun ang naging nangyari. In fact, instead of evil intent, Esau expresses affection, an eagerness for reunion, unconditional accept, acceptance, a, a, a spontaneous act of vulnerability in a renewed heart. And so Esau is not out for revenge. Hindi siya para gumanti. And certainly not murder. Rather, he demonstrates unqualified affection for his long-lost brother. Reconciliation is initiated by a renewed heart. The only thing more beautiful in the chains of Jacob, I think the only thing that shines brighter than the chains in Esau, dito po, ay makikita ho natin sa verse 4 ng chapter 33. But Esau ran to meet him, embraced him, and fell on his neck and kissed him, and they wept. It is one of the most beautiful scenes in the scripture. 
Ang binabasa ko po itong passage na ito, ilang beses ko na ako nabasa ang passage na ito, but every time I read this passage, naiiyak ko ako lagi. It is hard to find words to describe this sin. It is a powerfully emotional sin. You know, after the incentive, in, intensity of the loss and sense of betrayal back when, 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 when Jacob first deceived and defrauded Esau, after the intensity of Jacob's fear during the build-up to this meeting, it is hard to find words to describe the intense emotion of the sin. And, and, and this is true for the two men as well, for there are no words that pass between them. There is only action. The action of repentance and forgiveness. And it brings weeping. Weeping of joy, but also weeping of sorrow and regret. It is one of the most powerful scenes in the scripture. Yes, we are powerless to change others, but God is able. And Esau had been changed by God. Hindi na po sinabi sa atin ano po ang nag-transpire in the last 20 years. But yung resulta ay napaka-remarkable. And so when, when Jacob returned, he was afraid because he assumed that Esau still hated him and wanted to kill him. What Jacob did not anticipate is that God was not only changing Jacob's heart, but Esau's as well. May ginagawa na ang Diyos sa puso ng bawat isa sa kanila. And this genuine affection on display, a softness of heart, a demonstration of true reconciliation. We, 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 don't, we, we don't change people. God does. And let us pursue reconciliation in the hopes that God is working in our life and others. A changed attitude and a changed heart, both of which changes are necessary for reconciliation to take place. However, we do have a role in the process. You know, the heart is the center of our emotions. And Jesus said in Matthew chapter 15, verse 19, out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murder, and so on and so forth. And that's where broken relationships start. In the heart. And so, kapatid, what about your heart? If you are a Christian and you hold bitter feelings against someone, then you need to examine your heart, your own heart first. Whenever we experience fractured relationships, we need to ensure that we are not holding bitterness in our own hearts because bitterness eats away like a cancer, which is, which if untreated can kill you spiritually and emotionally. Hebrews 12, 15 says, See that no one fails to obtain the grace of God, that no root of bitterness springs up and causes trouble, and by it many become defiled. Bitter manifests itself <clears throat> in your attitude to others. Bitterness not only eats away at you on the inside, but it also affects everyone else around you as well. Hindi lang ikaw, bagi yung mga taong nakapaligid sa inyo. And apparently, Iso has a renewed heart. He has dealt with his bitter feelings against Jacob. Yung kanyang iniisip sanang patayin, ang kanyang kapatid have changed to feelings of affection. Instead of anger, he exudes warmth and Love, ang dumaloy ay yung pag-ibig sa kanya. Embracing and kissing Jacob. And so the tension is released. And they wept together. And there is nothing quite like love and tears to bring down the walls of disagreement and separation. At dito po sa narrative na ito, the brothers had changed. Esau and Jacob. And therefore, true reconciliation could be pursued. A change, attitude, 
and a changed heart in us and others is necessary for true reconciliation. Next, the work, of, the work toward reconciliation, we must provide clemency or forgiveness. Let's go on verses 4 to 11 because this is surprising and, 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 and affectionate emotional encounter between these formerly strange brothers in, in, in this passage that this nag-strike po sa akin because I mean, Iso comes across parang pinapakita po dito sa, sa passage na ito na, uh, Iso is the nicest guy in the world parang napakabait dito ni, ni Iso and it, it is a story of forgiveness, intense masidhing uh, pagpapatawad God had worked in Esau's heart and Esau had gotten rid of his anger and, 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 and his hatred and yung kanyang pride. Nung nakita niya, napaparating na si Jacob, forwards him, bobbing down to the ground, he runs to meet him and embraces him and they kiss one another and they both wept. Oh, Jacob wept for joy that he had found favor in, in, in his brother's eyes. That Esau had forgiven him and Esau wept at seeing Jacob after 20 long years realizing that his absence was, was, was due to, 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 to the anger and hatred that he had against his brother. And that, that the hurt was forgiven and absolved in, is seen in the fact that they never mentioned to each other and they begin to converse as if parang Parang hindi sila nagkagalit. And to pursue forgiveness, we must forgive failures and not continually brings them up, bring them up. Pagka nagpatawad tayo, hindi mo na yan ulit. Yung totoong pagpapatawad, hindi mo na yan ulit kakalkalin. If we are going to love someone as God calls us to and experience reconciliation with that person, we must learn to forgive and let go of past failures, especially kung yung tao naman ay makikita mong nag-confess na at nag Notice in verse 10 of chapter 33, Jacob says, If I found favor in your sight, then accept my present from my hand, for I have seen your face which is like seeing the face of God and you have accepted me. What is Jacob talking about? Seeing the face, like seeing the face of God. So, pagkat sa puntong ito, kung babalikan natin na chapter 32, sariwa pa sa isipan ho, ni, 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 ni Jacob yung meeting, meeting niya with God. As he wrestled with him through the night, and as he was blessed by him at daybreak, just as he had seen God face to face and his life was spared, so the same is true with Esau. He has seen Esau face to face, and the same grace that was given to him by God in sparing him, and was also given to him by Esau in sparing him. And Jacob was prepared, in fact, to die at the hands of his brother. But his brother showed grace and favor and forgave him. Jacob urges Esau to take his gift, or literally, his blessing. And Esau con con consents to take the, the, the gift. Why? Because by this act, Esau assures Jacob of his forgiveness. Na tinanggap niya ang pagpapatawad. And the two brothers are reconciled. Reconciliation is the act of restoring the relationship between the offender and the person offended. In any re relationship breakdown, someone, someone has been wrong and what it means is if the relationship has any hope to be reconciled, someone must show grace by choosing to forgive. Kapag babanggitin po natin ang salitang forgiveness, anong tumatakbo sa ating isipan? Is it someone who betrayed you? Lied to you? Lied about you? Mistreated you? Took advantage of you? 
Maybe you, you think of the remnants of a broken relationship. An old best friend, strange family member, former business partner, a boyfriend or girlfriend. Kaya may hugot ka ngayon, magpahanga ngayon. Or spiritual authority in your life that abuse their power. Or what relationship in your life has been devastated because of a deep hurt any deep offense. Hindi ko po alam ang ating pong, ang inyo pong mga particular na sitwasyon at kalalagayan, but I do know the relational pain and heartache that is caused by the sins of another. And I know kung gaano po kahirap even to think about much less actually do in forgiving someone who has wounded you so deeply. Forgiveness is an act of the will empowered by the Holy Spirit in response to the grace we ourselves as have received. It is a conscious decision to fully and freely pardon our offender. So when we forgive one another, we break down the wall that has arisen between us and open the way for a reconciled relationship. Ultimately, forgiveness, mga kapatid, is a gift from God. Jacob and Esau could not do it alone, and neither can we. We need to pray for God's help in being able to honestly forgive others. We have to ask God to give us His love and forgiveness toward the one who has wronged you or us. No, there are four promises one makes to truly forgive. And I'll get this from a great little book, Peacemaking for Families. Kung talagang totoo ang pagpapatawad mo, nasabihin mo sa sarili mo, I will not think about it. I will not bring it up and use it against you. I will not, I will not talk to others about it. And I will not allow it to stand between us or hinder our personal relationship. Kapatid, are you there yet with the one who has offended you? Are you truly open to reconciliation in the relationship if they are really are repentant? Who is God calling you to forgive? What's keep you from showing grace towards someone else today? Nasaan ka na sa iyong lakbayin patungo sa pagkakasundo? Nasaan na ang ating iglesia ngayon? Nasaan na ang KBCF sa lakbayin sa daan ng pagkakasundo ngayon? Naroon ka na ba na handa, bukas na ang iyong kamay ngayon, mulat na ang iyong mga mata para makita mo yung taong dating ayaw na ayaw mong makita. At minsan dahil dyan, hindi ka na nagpupunta sa church dahil Maamoy mo pa lang ang pabango kung mukulo na ang dugo mo. Makita mo lang ang hibla ng kanyang buho. Gusto mo nang lamakutin. Hindi ba? You can know you have truly forgiven someone when you no longer want retaliation. Second, you no longer define that person by their offense. And third, you look past the person to the real problem because the problem is sin. And you can truly pray for that person's well-being. Kaya mo na siyang ipanalangin. Hindi yung, Lord, kunin mo na siya. Forgiveness is costly for the one doing the forgiving. When God forgives our sins in Christ, it doesn't mean that He brushes them aside. It means that Jesus Christ paid the penalty so that we could go free. And Jesus said that just as God has forgiven us, we must forgive others from our hearts. In Matthew chapter 18. God is a God of reconciliation. God can take a relationship that seems dead and breathe 
life back into it. God doesn't look at what could have been. He looks at what could be. He looks through the lens of redemption rather than the lens of regret. He can take what is broken and put it back together. And that's what's going on with Jacob and Esau. I believe ito pong encounter na ito, isa pong totoong pagkakasundo. It's a true reconciliation. True forgiveness took place here. True reconciliation took place here. In Esau and Jacob, we have a picture of, of, of what reconciliation really looks like. And so in verses 12 to 20, to 20, we see that Jacob and Esau, they parted, reconciled. And this is a very powerful story of recon reconciliation. This is because of the power of God to restore broken things. He, he can take broken relationships and mend ma them back together. Because God has reconciled us to Himself through Jesus Christ, we can reconcile with each other. You know, in the reunion of Jacob and Esau, in, uh, and Esau in Genesis chapter 33, we see that God reconciles us to, to our brothers in order to restore us to Himself. And the good news is that though we all have wronged God through Christ's death on the cross, he paid the penalty we deserve. At mga kapatid, as you model His love and forgiveness, it could open the door of the one who wronged you to experience God's forgiveness, which is probably His greatest need. 2 Corinthians 5, 18 and 19, God has given to us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, Christ God was reconciling the world to Himself, not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. If you will deal with your attitude by forgiving those who have wronged you and by submitting yourself to the sovereign God dealing with you, He will use you as His agent, mga kapatid. To those who have wronged you. And you will know the joy of restored, loving, God-centered, Christ-centered relationships. Relationship, uh, I mean reconciliation is a glorious picture of the gospel. Reconciliation is a glorious picture of the gospel. Heavenly Father, dalangin po namin na mangusap po kayo sa puso ng bawat isa po sa amin sa aral na dinisenyo ngayon para po sa amin. Panginoon, we confess that we are stubborn and self-reliant people. We, minsan, Panginoon, mas na namin yung mga sarili namin devices ng aming karunungan and do not bow before your word. O oh Lord, forgive us. Turn our eyes to Jesus that we may see the grace that saves us. That we, that we may see the grace that humbles us. Oh Lord, as you have reconciled with us through Christ, tulungan niyo po kami that we are to reconcile with others. We ask that you would humble us that we might be exalted for the sake of our Savior's glory. Because we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.